have believed this world alive Come back down and sit beside your feet tonight Wherever I am, you'll always be More than just a memory Well, if I ever leave this world alive Hey folks, Professor Finn here. Today we're going to be talking about your national board exam. Now, at the several institutions I teach at where um, I am doing some sort of board prep or we're, you know, getting ready for your exit uh, courses, I will discuss in depth with students, you know, how and what you should be doing in preparation for your board exams. And arguably, I either get good results or I get bad results. So what I'm going to do is just kind of record, hopefully not more than maybe a you know, 15, 16 minute video today, and talk about what are things that you can be doing post-graduation for your boards. So the first thing I want to talk about your national board exam is one, get in and get it done. The number one problem I think that students suffer with is not getting in and getting it done. I've had students wait 18 months after graduation to take an exam. Don't do that. No professional exam on earth gets easier the more time that elapses. Whether it's the bar, EMT certs, whether it's nursing certification, doctor board exams, none of it gets easier the longer you are out of school. And I think that is a huge problem that mortuary students have because unlike these other bodies, people like putting their boards off. So the first and foremost thing is pay the fees for the exam, schedule your dates as soon as possible, and get the exam done. Now, the International Conference says that up to, I think it's a 45-day wait is acceptable. So if you're graduating on June 1st, they say that it is okay that if the test centers in your area can get you a day within 45 days, that that's an acceptable waiting period. I may not agree with that, but that is what they have said. And maybe it's 30 days now, but whatever it is, the result is if you are scheduling your exam three, four, five months out, and those are the only dates that are available, are dates four or five months out. You need to go to this website, theconferenceonline.org. You need to call them and say, hey, I'm trying to take an exam in whatever location you live in. And every test center within 50 miles is filled until October right now. Is there any way we can open up some of these things or whatever? You need to have that conversation with them. And you'll find them probably more than receptive try to assist you or tell you why it is the wait times are so long. And that comes from their mouths. Okay, That is something that they have told the educators at the annual meeting of the American Board of Funeral Service Education, that if you have these you know, several month waits, please let us know so we can contact, contact the exam vendor, and then they can try to open some dates up at different locations. The second thing is don't be afraid to go back in after you register for your exam and see if there are dates available sometime sooner. That is certainly the thing. Now, when I graduated mortuary school back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, I was eligible to take the boards in my final semester of study. If all other work for, um, for graduation was completed, and that's exactly what I did. I took my board exams while I was still in school because at the time, practicum at St. Petersburg College under Professors Davis and Professors Brown, shout out to my homies back in Pinellas County, um, that was the requirement that you will attempt the board exam while you were in practicum as well as knock out like, I forget what it was, 200 hours uh, working at a funeral home. And boom, you know, I got it done while I was there. Now the rules are we can certify you when all of your academic requirements are done and there is nothing to prevent you from graduating, which is basically the last you know, week or two of classes uh, we can certify you because you have to have completed everything and you must be graduating. So basically, it's open to graduates only. So number one, get in, get your board exam taken care of. Number two, right here from the board exam website, let's look at item number four. 
you want to get the National Board Exam Study Guide. Now, I've recorded a video talking a little bit about, a little bit, where I have talked about the content outlines in here. You need to get the study guide. And you need to compare the items that are going to be in these different sections to the knowledge that you have gained so you know what you're going to be assessed in what area. This is, for some reason, a problem I have transmitting to my students uh, in Miami and other locations. Get the study guide and see exactly what it is they may ask you in the different sections so that you don't walk in and get wrecked by the exam. And the way you do that is you get their study guide. Now, you will see they do have a practice national board exam um, right here. If you want to take that, you may do that. Now, that's up to you, okay? Um, it is not intended to prepare you for the national board exam. The questions on there um, may be loosely associated with questions that you may get on an actual board exam, but they are not questions you will see on a board exam because they're available here for purchase and anyone can take them. So you're not going to get actual board exam questions. Um, so if you want to take this, by all means, do it and check it out. Good for you. But this is one of the things that you can do if you have, you know, the disposable income. What are some other things that you can do? Well, there are some textbooks on the market. Now, a good acquaintance of mine and a well-respected peer uh, is a guy by the name of Dr. John Fritch. And here at the Funeral Service Education Resource Center, he has a number of textbooks. Uh, and the one that I recommend to all people preparing for the board is to prepare to succeed. It is nothing more than a test bank of questions written by educators in the United States. And these are very recent questions. This book did not exist more than like two years ago, I think it is. So it is a very, very recent book. I find the questions to be very good in general. And it's important that you take questions from people you have never met so you can get an idea of how questions can be asked over different subjects. Now, I'm not saying you have to buy every single book on the page, but many of you probably have some of the books here already, which segues into the next thing. Make sure you're looking at your textbooks. When you compare what's going on and what they're saying from the practice, um, from the study guide, okay, when you compare what they say they're going to ask you in what sections on which board exam here, you need to go into your books and see, well, okay, where does this stuff come from? What places can they pull this from? That is an important task you need to do. So go through and collect all of your funeral service textbooks. And if you've been selling them back or you only rented them, this is where you're going to get hurt because this is a professional program. You want to have all of your books until you finish your board exams. And you want to get your board exams as done as soon as possible because the longer you wait, the more information might become outdated. So prepare to succeed is an excellent test bank, but make sure you're also going back and using that study outline to help guide you as to what can be pulled into um, a board exam. The next thing some people bring up is the funeral service comp pen. This book has been around for years and years and years and years. Uh, I am not a fan of this book. When I was in mortuary school, I guess it was quasi useful. Um, but I am not a fan of this book. And one of the reasons being is like the one place I found it on Amazon, it was like 500 bucks. Yeah, hardcover, 546 bucks. No damn way, man. No damn way. Um, that's just ridiculous. So I think you can still buy this uh, from a couple of other locations. Um, but in general, folks, no. Okay. The, the compend questions are old, old, retired board exam questions. And they do not generally ask questions in this style anymore. Is this a, if you have this available and it is not costing you anything or it is a minuscule expense, I am never going to say that you answering questions is bad, but you have to keep in mind that there are known typos in this book. There are incorrect answers in the answer bank. And one of the largest problems that I have with this is some of the questions you simply don't know where they've pulled the information from anymore. Um, so if it's a wrong answer, 
you won't even know what book to look it up in because, you know, the questions in here are so old that those sources may not exist anymore. So the funeral service content should be taken with a grain of salt. If you have access to it, that's great, but don't spend 500 bucks on it uh, when you can pay 50 bucks and get prepared to succeed. Uh, and and prepared to succeed does not have board exam questions on it. Individuals who have written items for the board exam may have provided um, intellectual property for this book, so they have composed new questions specifically for this text, but this text does not contain any question that has ever been used on a board exam because that is not the intent of it. Uh, and that would get you know the publisher of this book in deep dookie with the international conference if they were stealing their questions. So a good healthy mix of questions here that are modern. This, if you have it as a backup, you know, I'm not gonna say no, but I don't really recommend it. Um, but again, if you have it available, knock yourself out. You all see there's some other things up here like funeral service, exam secrets, and I think I've seen this uh, funeral service national board examination red book for 33 bucks. I can't tell you that they are any more useful than a football bat. Um, I, I just, I, I don't see any use in them whatsoever. Um, generally, I don't think they're going to be worth, uh, they're going to be worth anything. But someone proved me wrong. Okay, you know what? This one has 99 reviews. Um, uh, by all means, prove me wrong. But I, I, I don't see any reason why uh, these would be useful, uh, especially because of the fact that I think the last time they were edited was like years and years and years ago. Let's take a peek here real quick. Um, last time this was edited. Well, it does say it was published in 2016. Um, I know I have a, a copy of this book and I was unimpressed by it. Uh, but you can see the first uh, the first review on this was 2016, not too hot. Uh, 20 is not too hot. But here we are in 2020 and someone says, awesome. Um, 2015. So jury might be out. I've been, I'm not a fan of it. I, I have an older version of it. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, if someone found this useful, you know, feel free to drop something in the comments. Let me know how that went. Um, but overall, I may not be impressed. Uh, if you get the 33 bucks, I'm not going to say no for 33 bucks. Check it out. So what else can you do? Let's go ahead and close. So here we are at the MDC Blackboard website. Um, if your school provides you resources, especially uh, those of you who have, for instance, um, comprehensive exams, Generally, your accounts stay active after graduation you know, for about six months. Go in and make sure that you are using whatever your school, your school gives you for study materials, whether it be you know, study outlines, whether it be uh, PowerPoints, whether it be pre-recorded lectures, uh, any sort of practice assessments, whatever. If there's something that your school gives you, again, take the National Board Exam Study Guide look at the content breakdown and try to find those items within the literature that your school has taught you from. The last thing would be things like Quizlet. The last thing would be online tools that are available for everyone. Uh, and I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you that if you're going to be using something like Quizlet, do not look at things from your own institution. You can go to the American Board of Funeral Service Education, AB, abfse.org. And you can go to the list of accredited programs and just look at the directory of programs. You know, just pick a state, uh, we'll go District of Columbia. And we have um, your University of District of Columbia Community College Mortuary Science Program. Go on to Quizlet and see what they have. The reason why this is important is because if people have created study banks from different schools, it's probably in your best interest to see what these other people are teaching so that you are getting questions you've never seen before asked by people you have never met. And the goal here is expose you to as many things as possible. So if you are going to go on Quizlet, Look at other schools and see what their students have posted because that may trigger something. Oh, I've never thought of that. Let me go check that out. And that may assist you in finding some of these deficient areas. 
And one of the last things that you have is if you have someone like myself who has a channel that wants to create content to help you, by all means, send us an email, post a comment. Hey, why don't you talk about this? Whatever it's going to be because of the fact that we may be able to address some of those things. So why is this video here? Well, because earlier today, I got an email from uh, a student from the Dallas Institute of Funeral Service, where I teach now and then, thanking me for you know, all the fun and giggles uh, for the classes they took me for, and was saying that you know he passed his final comprehensives and he finished his degree and now is going on the board prep. And I said, well, you know, good luck with that. Um, if you find you need something after the fact, by all means, you know, reach out, let me know. And his question was, well, yeah, now that you mentioned that, how about, you know, what is the best way to approach this? And the best way to approach this is for me to make a video to talk about this so that later on, if he wants to come back and he wants to listen to it, he's able to do it. If someone else wants to listen to it, they can. And if there's a question, they can post something in the comments and here we go. So, you know, one, Thank you to the student for um, asking the question because, you know, they want to succeed and they want every possible advantage to succeed. And two, thank you for, you know, giving me the idea to talk about this, maybe the impetus to get this done today rather than a couple months from now, so that this, um, this item is out there. So folks, uh, like, share, subscribe, share this video with your fellow graduates of your institutions. Let them know that if you do have questions that, you know, uh, that I'm a resource. And I am not opposed that if enough of you want something that maybe you can do like, you know, a Twitch stream or something like that, where we talk about the subjects that are there. It's not just kind of this, oh, Professor Fink can lecture on and post a video whenever we want. You know, I can, I can, uh, my, my time permitting, I'm happy to always jump in there and, you know, do something like, so I love interacting with people. So folks, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next video. Sky, misty taste of moonshine, teardrop in my eye. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home. Country roads.